Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, Prairie Dice Guns. So today we got on the financially broke wall is the Gen 3 Type 97 Narinko in 5.56. Pretty sure it's a Gen 3, don't quote me on that, but just don't quote me on anything, but so this is semi-auto, uh, 18.6 barrel or something, so I'm just going to do a little bit of a overview on it and disassembly and how user friendly it really is. So it's got the stampings there. And the uh, flash guard or whatever the heck you want to call it, A2. Friggin' pinned in there. Not even threaded, so I'd rather pay extra for a threaded barrel, but I guess that's what we get, so. Um, mag release is on both sides. It's not really that, it's kind of small and not that good. And uh, safety. Stuck it right in your armpit. So it's pretty gross too, the safety is. And charging handle, it's, I like the charging handle. It's big enough, you can grab it. You can put it on either side too. I stuck it on that side. Um, trigger is pretty gross too, but I guess that's bullpup problems, but this one's pretty sloppy. I'm gonna stick it up in my holding here. So we will dry the trigger. I'm not gonna show you if the chamber's empty just so you gotta worry about it. So it does have a lot of take up then it's got like a little wall there. And the let off. So it was quite a bit of play, but once you find the wall, like it's not too bad, I guess. Um, it's it's put together not bad, I guess. There's like a little bit of play in the lower, but you can get upgraded, like a whole new upper and lower for it, or top piece or whatever the heck you want to call it, but. So it's, they're kind of expensive, so for the price of it, you can just go buy another, buy a whole new other gun, so. Then uh, I stippled, or made an attempt at it, the grip. I don't really, this is kind of my do-all gun, and so I don't really care if it, it's all scratched up or not, so I did uh, stipple the front too, so I, it's nice to have grip, I think, but, and it makes it look not bad at the front there. I'm not too good at stippling, so I just thought I'd practice on this one anyways. Usually I got the Smith & Wesson light on there. It's, it's not too bad, but like it, you gotta cycle through the settings too find what you want. I don't think you can set it on this thing, so that's about the only issue I have with this, but um, it does have M-lock on either side there. I guess you could put things in there, but like they're different size, so you're gonna have to pick and choose which one you use, but I don't think you can even use it. Maybe you could, I don't know, but I just use the bottom one, so. And it does come with uh, flip-up sights, which I think this thing came bent, so it's pretty, pretty gross too. I don't think it's 
they could have made it quite a bit better if they wanted to, but I mean, whatever, I guess. You get what you pay for, but it does uh, ship with just a steel magazine. It's pretty bad quality, like it two rivets on it. I don't really think that's necessary, but yeah, you can tell it's just not good quality, but and it only works for this thing because it's got the stupid rivet at the front. As you could file down the rivet so that it's flush with the magazine, but still in there so you don't go with the sin bin for a few years, but so it ships with this and it, it's fine, like it drops free and everything, but those with like some, uh, the P mags, like a P mag will fit in there, but it will not, it won't drop free by itself. And um, I think this is an E-Lander. This one will drop free. I noticed like on, uh, I think this is uh, Duramag. Like it won't, it won't slide in there because I don't know what you call this piece in the mag. Well, like that back little notch for that piece of the magazine. I'm just going to call it a spline. I don't know what you call it, but that piece, it's too thick on some magazines. So you're going to have to pick and choose which magazine you use. But the Lancers do work also. I got a bunch of magazines I could test, but I just don't feel like doing that right now. This one's a uh, roller mag. So when it came, it went all well, pro mag, roller mag, I don't know. But when this one came, it would not, I think it would go in, but it just super tight because that was too wide. So I... All you really got to do on the polymer ones is just file that back piece down and then it'll go in there with these and drop free. So that's all you really got to do for certain mags that won't go in the Type 97. I guess another thing also if you need to lock the bolt back you just open your pull the charging handle back and push that little it's got that little bolt hole open right there i don't know if you can see it that little tab sticking out right there you just pull that pull it back and then push it up and it'll hold the bolt back if you have or want the bolt out of the way. And I did notice like it does when you insert it, it will over insert the magazine a little bit. But the steel mags don't seem like they're too bad for that but like uh, the polymer mags like P-Mags, they do uh, will over insert a little bit, just like that. So you just gotta make sure you don't ram them in when the bolt is locked to the rear. That's what the, another thing you gotta worry about. So I pushed it up. Yeah, like it won't, the bolt won't go forward. So I guess there's a, uh, Maybe the tab on the magazine still holding it open, but yeah, you just gotta make sure you don't have it wedged in there. So it's one thing I noticed too. So we'll go ahead and take it down and show you guys how annoying it is to 
do so. So we will take the back pin off. There's only two pins to really do it all. So that's the back plate there. And your recall spring. And your bolt. And this pin retains itself, so. And then to get the handguard off, it's just that pin there. Or the lower handguard, or like you want to call it. This is super annoying to take off, so I wouldn't advise it all the time. So there's the little bar that catches on the trigger. So it's super annoying to take it off because you're gonna have to line that back up in there. I haven't really found like a good way to go about doing it. And then the top of the handguard hooks into there and then you gotta get the trigger group or the trigger to hook in there on that little piece right in there this is about all I really took down I haven't cleaned the gas system or anything I took the top rail off to move that side it's just a little bolt that holds it in there and this does have like a little notch in there so it doesn't flop back but I really notice it really doesn't hold it all the time because when it's not the last round you'll I usually find it like right there but yeah then when it comes um <clears throat> <clears throat> it's adjustable gas piston so you can adjust it so it's got zero one and two so when it comes it comes on zero and when you shoot it like you'll have to cycle the bolt manually so I didn't I really didn't know too much about it so I shot it and it would just it wouldn't cycle it so then I figured out you gotta adjust your gas block there so you just push that bottom piece down sorry my it's hard to see but you just push that piece down like that and then I run it on one I think two would be like if it's dirty or something and it's not cycling then you'd put it to two i'm pretty sure but like don't quote me on it but i would definitely do your research before listening to me but yeah then you can just then it's pretty easy to clean like the chamber and everything not like other we like the tavor where it's still has a top piece on it and it's harder to get at but this one's pretty pretty easy so we'll go ahead and stick the handguard back on. This is kind of a pain, so hopefully I can do it right the first time, but so you kinda gotta because it won't like usually it would be easier if you can put it on the the hanger there and then rock it in, but it won't get past that bottom square piece there. So you're gonna have to freaking super annoy this thing. You can I kind of hear it click in there, so I think I got it. So hopefully I'm gonna look like one major bum if I don't. So then you can uh, take out the bolt just like that, rotating it. So 
I cleaned it not too long ago, so I'm not going to go through all that again. So you just have to make sure that it lines up on those rails on the side before you slide it in. spring back in then you'll those got the two rails on the side too so you have to line that up on the rails I seen some guys they just pull the trigger but I just stick my finger on the hammer there or the trigger bar or whatever if you want to call it And this is kind of hard to do like this, but you gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. This would help if you took out the pin first. And she's back just like so. That is how you put it back together and disassemble it the way I do it. So I don't know. I'm sure there is, I don't know if there is an easier way, but like it's just taking that off, it's friggin' kind of dumb. But usually you can smack it or just, I think if you just pull it just ever so slightly, is when you take it off, the trigger will sit like the little notch that it hooks on. It's, it's, like that and that bar is down like that so if you just pull it a little bit to line that little notch up more straight it should be a little bit easier but that's about the easiest way that i've found but it is kind of just a pain probably not the best to just go around and start slapping it but i mean it's whatever yeah that's pretty much it but i guess with all the non-user friendly parts of the gun, like it does run well. That's about probably the only good thing I gotta say about it, is that it runs. And I guess that's all that really matters in the end for the most part. But I guess for a lefty, you don't, you don't really want to buy this gun, but I, did anyways because it only ejects out the right side and like it does it does hurl the brass out about like a one or two o'clock position like it, it throws them like far so I was kind of watching and I thought it'd be fine so I went to go and shoot it and I had my magnifier on so I probably would have been fine if I would have flipped it and just used the red dot, but I left it on so I had to get my face up close to, so it wouldn't be blurry. And so the shell ejected right and blew my lip open. Well, I guess I made it seem worse than what it was, but I don't know if I can add the photo in the video here, but Anyways, yeah, blew my lip open, so I was bleeding everywhere, so I guess that's lesson learned not to uh, shoot this thing with your face on the right side of the gun, so, but I'm sure I might have been fine with the red dot, because you do, usually it's called shooting forwards like the brass, but you get the odd one that does kick back at like five o'clock maybe, but that's it doesn't happen very often, but it does happen, so, but, yeah, so, I think it's in there like 1100 bucks when I got mine, so, it's probably gone up since then, but, but yeah, it's a pretty good gun, though, like, it, I haven't had issues with it at all, so, I guess with all the not so good parts about it it does run so and that's all that really matters in the long run i guess but i don't know how many rounds i got through it but 
I think I got enough where I could say it's reliable, so. But yeah, so, there's not too many guns in Canada, so if you were looking at getting one of these, it's a pretty good gun, so. I guess it does have uh, storage in the bottom here. And let's see if I can get it off here. Or maybe this, this the sight might be good for something. You've got like your cleaning rod and whatnot, so it is pretty nice when it comes with the gun. So I guess you could just stick batteries in there or whatever the heck you want to. Or yes, no, you couldn't. So I think there's uh Yeah, it does. You can see it through there, so I guess that's all you can... I guess take it out, the cleaning rod and stuff, and put batteries in there. Because you can see down in... Like, there's a hole that goes right through there, so... Scratch what I said about... Just setting batteries in there. You could put in the case, whatever you want, in that little plastic case, but that's about it, so. But yeah. It, I don't really care for the look of it. Like, it's kind of ugly, but I mean, it's, it shoots, so. That's all that matters. But. Thanks for tuning in. I was going to do some, uh, I was going to put a mask on and shoot it left-handed to see how much I get hit in the face with it to see if a lefty could actually shoot this without just eating brass. But I'll see if I can add that in here because I'm not too swift on the editing, but maybe I'll try and make a video like that and see if... So I'm just kind of curious why I took one of the face, so I just want to see if I could just have my face a little bit further back and be fine. But I know I'll, I'd still be a little bit paranoid about it, but yeah. But thanks for tuning in anyways, and I'll see you guys again. Okay guys, so Mountain Beautiful Saskatchewan and I was... I'm mildly interested if I, if people can shoot the Type 97 left-handed. I have before, but I got a shell in the lip, so. But I was using the magnifier, so I had to put my face up close to it, so. So I did my face like that, and I got in the lip, so I'm, I'm thinking if I can have my face a little bit further back if I will be fine or if I will get hit. So I'm gonna use my COVID mask that I used to wear to go to the mall to eat. I just would use this and they'd let me in. Before they wouldn't let me in. So I use this and I just stroll away it right in and they'd be okay with that. So, so we will Try it and see what happens. I'm gonna put my ears on first because it's pretty loud, this thing. So I'm gonna be using PMC and I think I got some uh, 556 American Eagle out of Lancer mags. I haven't used Lancer mags before, so we'll see how that works. So. Obviously the mask is a little bit further past my face, so but I'll try and line it up to where My face would normally be if you're normally shooting it, so we'll give it a whirl and see what happens
I did not get hit in the face, but I don't think it would be too advisable to shoot it like that because it is kind of sketchy. Like they they do a jack forwards, but you get the odd one that does shoot back. So I think it'll be fine for most of the time, but I would still be a little bit lenient to do so. So I guess it's really on you if you want to try shoot left-handed but if you got your face further back you'll probably be fine but i just rather not blow my lip open again so as thanks for watching my type 97 video